Now to fight dowry, there's a move to make anti-dowry laws tougher in India. But dowry is too complex a phenomenon to fight. Unlike ordinary crimes, it's not going to go away just with tougher laws. Which is why those who were at the forefront of the fight against dowry in the 80s, when it was at its peak, say it's not enough just to fight dowry, but to fight against a society where daughters are constantly denied their inheritance. Through the 70s and the 80s, bride burning was middle class India's shame. For many feminists, it was the single most important crusade. At that time, I really believed that a lot of marital abuse was due to dowry tussles. And so, we led the campaign, we initiated it in some ways. Madhu Kishwar's magazine Manushi, the leading voice for women's issues in India. Way back in 1980, it asked for a boycott of dowry weddings. But just eight years later, in 1988, Kishwa had a rethink. Many of my own friends, uh, who are not politically prisoned, uh, argued with me, saying, why do you want to deny us the little that we get at the time of marriage? Because women argued vehemently that my stand was wrong, I, I had to listen to them. That's Kishwar the argues that dowry exists rarely by crude demands or coercion, but more as a sophisticated unwritten code of exchange, accepted by not just families, even approved of by women. An argument that we see in practice when we meet this successful chartered accountant from an affluent South Delhi family. His identity concealed, he tells us how it works. Since there was a wedding in your family this Yeah, my sister got married this year. He's a chartered accountant, they are into practice. So did you spend a lot? Did you have to? <laughs> Not have to, but we spend. That was our wish. Roughly, how much did you end up spending? <laughs> I should not say that. Still, I mean... Maybe 40, 50. 50 lakhs. Like, we want to spend because it's my sister's marriage. To give her some comfort with an extra car so that she never faces a problem. Like jewelry, clothes, 25 lakh rupees of FD. If you don't spend the money at this stage for your daughter's marriage, there are some girls who may ask, in the future, okay, give me my share. So that creates a problem. So she should be given appropriate share at that time only. Her social security, everything should be given. So that she never thinks of that also. A logic that Kishwa realized was core to understanding why Davri has wide social acceptance. In a patriarchal society, Davri to the girl is the best way to limit her rights, to prevent any future clash over family inheritance. It's an economic calculation that neither legislation nor women's greater economic independence has managed to change. Supposing, let's say, I have to get married. Let's say I'm earning 50,000 rupees and my husband-to-be is also earning 50,000 rupees. My parents spend, let's say, 20 lakhs on my wedding. But with this 20 lakhs, if my parents have written off my right, uh, there is my hu husband-to-be, will also inherit the parental house. If his father owns a factory or he owns whatever else, a shop or a piece of land, he's going to inherit that as well. Then his monetary value, his you know, economic worth is far greater. I'm still going as a dependent in some ways on his property. With increasing nuclearization, of families, the boy's parents have the sense that they are handing over a very prized asset to her. So it's like compensate us in advance. And I think that's one of the reasons why tussles over dowry are getting to be so vicious. Because on the one hand, we have strengthened the rights of women as wives without strengthening their rights as daughters. And I do believe that once daughters are assured of inheritance rights, their parents, neither their parents nor their brothers are going to be so generous as to give them dowry as well as inheritance rights. And things will even out much sooner. In New Delhi, Supriya Sharma for NDTV.